हरि ओम वी कैन स्टार्ट Shall I start? Yes, please. Hari Om. I'll sing two bhajans tonight. One is Thumaka Chalata Ramachandra, and second one is Hari Sundara Nanda Mukunda. I'll repeat the same line twice. Second time, I hope the audience will follow and repeat with me. In case you're not able to hear me, please let me know. Um, I can repeat. छबी के समान 
रघुवर छवि बनिया ठुमक चलत राम चंद्र ठुमक चलत राम चंद्र बाजत पैंजनिया बाजत पैंजनिया ठुमक चलत राम चंद्र ठुमक चलत राम चंद्र ठुमक चलत राम चंद्र ठुमक चलत राम चंद्र The second bhajan I would sing is Hari Sundara Nanda Mukunda Hari Narayana Hari Om. हरि सुंदर नंद मुखला हरि नारायण हरि ओम हरि सुंदर नंद मुखला हरि नारायण हरि ओम हरि सुंदर नंद मुखला हरि नारायण हरि ओम हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओम हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओम हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ बनवारी मुरली धारे बनवारी मुरली धारे गोवर्धन गिरवर धारे गोवर्धन गिरवर धारे नित नित कर्मा खन चोरी गोपी मन हारे नित नित कर माखन चोरी गोपी मन हारे बनवारी मुरली धारी बनवारी मुरली धारी गोवर्धन गिरवर धारी गोवर्धन गिरवर धारी नित नित कर माखन चोरी गोपी मन हारी नित नित कर माखन चोरी गोपी मन हारे हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरि ओ बनवारी मुरली धारी बनवारी मुरली धारी बनवारी मुरली धारी गोवर्धन गिरवर धारी गोवर्धन गिरवर धारी नित नित कर माखन चोरी गोपी मन हारे नित नित कर माखन चोरी गोपी मन हारे आओ रे कान्हारे गोकुल के तारे आओ रे कान्हारे गोकुल के तारे आओ रे कान्हारे गोकुल के तारे आओ रे नाचो रे दास रचाओ रे 
आओ रे ना चोरे नास लचाओ रे आओ रे कान्हारे गोकुल के तारे आओ रे कान्हारे गोकुल के तारे आओ रे ना चोरे रास रचाओ रे हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरिओ हरि सुंदर नंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरिओ हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरिओ हरि केशव हरि गोविंदा हरि नारायण हरिओ बनवारी मुरली धारी गोवर्धन गिर वर धारे बनवारी मुरली धारी गोवर्धन गिर वर धारे नित नित कर माखन चोरी गोभी मन हारी हरि सुंदर मंद मुकुंदा हरि नारायण हरिओ हरि नारायण हरिओ हरि नारायण हरि हो गुरु चरण मन लागा लागा रे चरण मन लागा लागा रे गुरु चरण मन मन लागा लागा रे चरण मन लागा नम जनम का सोया पड़ा मन जनम जनम का सोया पड़ा मन शब्द सुनत अब जागा जागा रे शब्द सुनत अब जागा चरण मन लागा लागा रे चरण मन लागा माता पिता धन कुटुंब का बंधन पिता धन कुटुंब का बंधन तू ताजो कच्छा धागा 
ಹಾಜರೆ ಟೂಟ ಜೋ ಕಚ್ಛಾ ಧಾಗ ಸರ್ವೋಪರಿ ಬಹುತ ಕೃಪಾಕರಿ ಗುರು ಸರ್ವೋಪರಿ ಮೋಹ ಮಹಾ ನಿಸಿ ಭಾಗ ಮೋಹ ಮಹಾ ನಿಸಿ ಭಾಗ ನನ ಮನ ಲಾಗ ಲಾಗ ರೇ ಚರಣ ಮನ ಲಾಗ ಚಲತ ಚಲತ ಚಿತ ಗುರು ಮಾರಗ ನಿತ ಚಲತ ಚಲತ ಚಿತ ಗುರು ಪದ ನಿಧಿ ಪಾಯಾರೆ ಪಾಯಾರೆ ಆನಂದ ನಿಜ ಉಮರಾಯ ಆಯಾರೆ ಸಂಹೃತ್ ಸುಖ ಪದ ಪಾಯ ಗುರು ಚರಣ ಮನ ಲಾಗ ಲಾಗ ರೇ ಗುರು ಚರಣ ಮನ ಲಾಗ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಕಿ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ರತ ತೇರತ ಬೀತಿ ರೇ ಉಮರಿಯ ರಾಮ 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 ರತ ತೇರತ ಬೀತಿ ರೇ ಉಮರಿಯ
ರಘುಕುಲ ನಂದನ ಕವ ಆವೋಗೆ ರಘುಕುಲ ಬಿಲ್ ನಿಕೀಡಗರಿಯಾ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ರಥತೆ ರಥತೆ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ಶಬರಿ ಬಿಲಿ ಕಿ ಜಾಯಿ ಭಜನ ಭಾವ ನಹಿ ಜಾನು ರೆ ರಾಮ ತುಮ್ಹಾರೆ ದರ್ಶನ ಕೇಹಿತ ವನ ಮೇಜ ಪಾಲು ರೇ ಚರಣ ಕಮಲ ಸೆ ನಿರ್ಮಲ ಕರ ದೋ ದಾಸಿ ಕಿ ಝೋ ಪರಿಯಾ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ರಥ ತೇ ರಥ ತೇತಿ ರೇ ರಘುಕುಲ ನಂದನ ಕವ ಆವೋಗೆ ಬಿಲ್ ನಿಕೀಡಗರಿಯಾ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ರಥತೆ ರಥತೆ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ರಸತಾ ಸಾಫ ಕರಾತಿ ಅಪನೆ ಪ್ರಭು ಕೆ ಖಾತಿರ್ ವನ ಸೆ ಚುನ ಚುನ ಕೆ ಫಲ ಲಾತಿ ಮೀಠೆ ಮೀಠೆ ಬೇರು ಕಿ ಮೇ ಭರ ಲಾಯಿ ರೆ ಝಾ ಪರಿಯಾ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ರಥ ತೇ ರಥ ತೇ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ರೆ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಸಲೋನಿ ಸೂರತ ನಯನೋಜ್ ಬೀಚ ಕಸಾಂಗಿ ಪದ ಪಂಕಜ ಕೀರಜ ಧರ ಮಸ್ತಕ ಜೀವನ ಸಫಲ ಬನಾಂಗಿ ಪ್ರಭು ಜೀ ಮುಜ ಕೋ ಭೂಲ ಗಯೆ ಕ್ಯಾ ದಾಸಿ ಕೀಡಗರಿಯಾ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ರಥ ತೇ ರಥ ತೇ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ರೇ ನಾಥ ತುಮ್ಹಾರೆ ದರ್ಶನ ಕೀನಿತ ಮೈ ಅಬಲಾಯಕ ನಾರಿ ದ 
दर्शन दर्शन बिन दो नैना तर से सुन लो बहुत दुखारी हूँ मुझको दर्शन दे दो दया में डालो एक नजरिया राम राम रत दे रत दे बीती रे उमरिया राम राम रघुकुल नंदन कब आओगे भिलनी की डगरिया राम राम रत दे रत दे बीती रे उमरिया राम राम सियाभर रामचंद्र की वर्णनामर्थ संगानाम रसानाम छंद सामपी मंगलानाम चकरतारो बंदेवानी विनायको भवानी शंकरो वंदे श्रद्धा विश्वास रूपिनो या भ्याम विना न पश्यन्ति सिद्धा स्वास्थमीश्वर वंदे बोधमय निम गुरु शंकर यमाश्रितो हि वक्रोपि चंद्र सर्वत्र वंद्यते नाना पुराण निगमागम सम्मत यद रागदित क्वचिदन्यतोपि स्वांत सुखाय तुलसी रघुनाथ गाथा भाषा निबंध मति मंजुल मात नोति भाषा निबंध मति मंजुल मात नोति हरिओ ओके इफ यू आर जॉइनिंग अस टुनाइट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम वी आर सीइंग श्री रामचरित मानस and in the ramcharita manas aranyakand and in aranyakand we are seeing the ram gita lakshman ji puts five questions to bhagwan shri ram and bhagwan shri ram is replying to these questions and i told these are the best questions we can ask of course and it is instructional also to read between the lines that sita ji is not present while this ram gita is going on bhagwan shri ram the lord ishwara lord of the universe himself is giving upadesh on the most important questions about life gnana vairagya maya bhakti isha jeeva bhed these type of things right and she is not present and the the drama is laid out in such a way so as to teach this very important thing that the person who does not become privy to this type of knowledge that person is kidnapped and stolen away by the delusion of maya immediately after this ram gita the antecedent to the kidnapping of sita ji starts immediately शूर्पण का रावण के बहिनी यूल सी आफ्टर हे शूर्पण खा इज कथा सर एंड शूर्पण खा इज दन हू वेंट एंड पॉइजन द माइंड ऑफ रावण नॉट दैट इट वॉज नॉट पॉइजन ऑलरेडी एंड दे रावण केम एन किडनेप सीता जी सो दैट इज सिम्बॉलिक इट इज सिम्बॉलिक एक्ट सिम्बॉलिक ड्रामा विच इज गोइंग ऑन एंड इट टेल्स द जीवा हू इज नॉट प्रिवी टू दिस टाइप ऑफ 
questions and answers or who is not privy to this knowledge which Bhagwan is disseminating, that jiva becomes stolen away by sansara. Maya, uh, uh, Ravan represents that delusion of Maya which keeps that person bound in this sansar only. So the person gets kidnapped by that, taken away by that, distracted by that type of uh, Maya Prapancha, you see. Now, when we started last night, Bhagwan Sri Ram was giving the introduction, or when we left it last night, Bhagwan Sri Ram was giving the introduction to the last question. It was question number four, not number five. But Bhagwan chose to answer this question number four in the fifth position. So, and this question is what is bhakti? Kahu bhagati? Tell me that bhakti. Karahu jehi daya, by which I can gain your compassion, your mercy. If I practice that devotion, I'll get your mercy. Like that. So that was the question. What is that devotion? In other words, in short, what is bhakti? In our Bhagavad Gita, there's a whole chapter called as Bhakti Yoga. And many say from chapters 7 to 12, all of that is talking about Bhakti Yoga predominantly. You see? So it's a big portion of the uh, Vedic literature talking about Bhakti. And the Bhakti Marg is way bigger than Jnana Marga. Please pay attention to that. There may, see, mostly speaking, People are bhaktas only. People have shraddha, simple shraddha. In all the simple faith only. All the religions are like that. People, the majority of people will be in the bhakti portion of that dharma, that religion. Not, not in the in the gyan portion, few people only will follow. Few people will take to that because it requires a lot of intellectual application. And people are more, people live more by feeling and bhakti deals with feelings. I feel, you, you, you never say, no, nobody says, I have an, an, an intellectual craving for pizza. Anybody says? I, you say, I feel like having pizza. And like that type of feeling, I feel like this and I feel like that and I feel, have you ever intellectually considered why you have a favorite color suppose your favorite color is green as i was saying previously intellectually have you ever thought why no nobody thinks what is your favorite color? i like green like that because you have a certain feeling towards green human beings live by feeling actually everything is about feeling hmm. so basically the human being feels not that he's supposed to feel only a human beings Highest faculty is intellect. He is supposed to think. But the emotional faculty overrides the intellectual faculty more often than not. Ah. And so he based most of his actions on feelings. And therefore, Bhakti Marga, which is based on, is on love. Love is a feeling. Love is not an intellectual thing. In Bhakti Marga, most people follow. In any religion, Nyan Marga is less people. So that bhakti, which is applicable to most people, that bhakti, Bhagwan Ram, uh, Bhagwan Ram is now explaining to Lakshmana. He asked about that bhakti. Yeah? No, we will see. This is now after number 15. 15 point. Seven, uh, six, two, four, six. Shri Ram Jay Ram, Jay Jay Ram. Prathama hi be pracharan. Ati Priti Nija Nija Karma Nirat Shruti Riti Pra 
अथ मि बे प्रचरन अति प्रीति श्रीराम निज निज कर्म निरत श्रुति रीति राम जय राम जय जय राम जय रघु राम जय सीता राम श्यावर राम चंद्र की प्रथम ही फर्स्ट सी द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एलिमेंट इन भक्ति एनी टाइप ऑफ भक्ति डिवोशन इज कॉल एज प्रेम प्रेम मीन्स लव आई सेट दैट प्रीवियसली प्रेम लव नाउ सिंपल Satu asman parama prema rupa. In the sutras also it is said, eh? like that. Supreme love for that. Now, prem is not. I told you, love is not an intellectual thing. So you cannot define. How you will define? Define. So Bhagwan doesn't go into any definition of bhakti and all. What is here, and what is in twelfth chapter of Bhagavad Gita also? See there. Really speaking, it is gunas. Means qualities or practices. Means striving to acquire those qualities. This is really speaking. In in any discussion about bhakti, it is really the practices involved in bhakti. It is no definition of bhakti because you cannot define love. Try. other things intellectual things we can define what is vairagya what is gyan what is maya like this the definitions in shastra is every what is bhakti very difficult what is prem so bhagwan gets straight gets straight into telling the practices of bhakti in other words so what is prathamahi first what is that vipracharana ati priti vipra vipra is translated generally as brahmana and tulsi das ji i tell you <coughs> in in bhagavad gita also bhagwan talks about the long passage of time in fourth chapter he is telling arjuna in the long passage of time this knowledge gets lost so any civilization all civilizations go through this necessarily this is in nature of prakriti what things die means all the trees die and again new ones come so there is a decadence and then there is a renaissance just and this keeps on going necessarily because it is the nature of prakriti huh? everything has built in self destructive mode that is the nature of things in the world yeah so now <clears throat> over a long period of time what happens to uh, practices and ideas and thoughts and so many things they decay and they go through periods of decadence and all that huh? like for example um or many of you might be hearing about uh, our recent uh, author no what is his name tole what is it ekat tole hmm he wrote a, he wrote a very famous book and the power of now and in that book i read many many years ago when he had just written what he said you know even the word god the word god over a long period of time that word has taken on so many various types of meanings and And, and and so many different shades and really sometimes it may even turn a person off so so what this is what happens over a long period of time 
even when the person hears the word God is like a, a red rag to a bull or red flag or rag or whatever it is, show to a bull. Also. When people hear about religion, it is like a red rag to a bull. So things happen like that. It is a same thing which has happened to this word Brahmana over a long period of time, you know. And therefore, Tulsa, she does not use this word. So I, I was seeing this Ram Charita Manas compared to the word Bipra, which she uses, which comes from Vedas. Ekam Sat. Vipraha Bahudaha Vadanti. So in Rig Veda, oldest of the Vedas, this word is coming from there. Tulsi Dashi chooses to use this word. Vipra in, in Avadi, Vipra. The Brahmana word, he, for every 100 Vipra word he uses, one time he uses Brahmana word. And it is because this word has a very special significance, such a wonderful word. V in Sanskrit is an upasarga and pra becomes the root for the noun. Uh, here, or, or, or the root for the, the, root, the substantive root for a verb. Visheshena, V is for Visheshena, Pragna. Visheshena Pragna. One who is endowed with great wisdom, great knowledge, and wisdom. So that person called a dipra. He uses this word, huh? and that is of great significance. If you see in this Ram Charitamanas, in other words, even if we translate as Brahmana, a Brahmana is supposed to be one who is of great wisdom, great knowledge and wisdom. Simple translation is a Ved, Ved Party, one who is um, one who goes on chanting the Vedas all day. And um, who's endowed with good qualities? He's called he's he's called as sadachari, one who not nirachari with no achar. <laughs> achari sadachari like that. Huh? So, to so such a person, Tulsi Dashi says, what is that? Charana ati priti. So now, in this first pada, first quarter of his discourse on bhakti, Bhagwan Ram is telling two very important things. One is, see, priti. Priti is prem. Same I was telling you just now, right? Prem. Priti. Love. So this first element is coming. Second, the same thing. Charana. Ati priti. Love for the feet. This word, whenever it comes, hmm, love for the feet of such and such, everywhere it comes in, in our literature, right? This word indicates seva. Because if you say love for the feet of the guru, love for the feet of Bhagwan, love for the feet of the brahmana, love for the feet of the santa, what it means? You sit there and love the feet all day and do nothing or what? This word indicates seva. Huh? So please remember it's a very simple connection. Love for the feet of anyone of the great soul that we talk about in Sanatana Dharma means doing seva for that. For that one. So, so two things which are coming now in the first pada, priti, prem. Uh, one is uh, um, masculine and one is feminine. It will do, do different words like that only, right? So, priti and seva. No, love and seva. Prem and seva. Look here. Primarily, bhakti has four main things. All these four must be there in a bhakta. Otherwise, he's not bhakta. Eh? Look, it means he's not, he's not complete bhakta. He's like a dhulmul kind of bhakta means halfway kind of bhakta prem must be there shraddha must be there smaran must be there and seva must be there all four so prem love shraddha great faith then smaran remembering bhagwan all the time remembering his name and his glories and all such things smaran 
and then finally seva and i was telling you on one of the previous days but vibhishan had all three what about seva no seva all three were there and the fourth one was missing and that seva comes from the ripening or the maturing of these three and that can become ripened or matured only in satsang and that's why when he had satsang with hanuman ji he got up to do seva of bhagwan ram see so this seva is indicated by the word charana we say ati priti great love for the feet of the brahmana the learned ones why because they are the ones who will remove our moha janita samshaya in scriptures it is talked like that and here ramayan also will remove all because of the end out with knowledge so they will remove all our uh, doubts and delusions mm, like that now other practice now of the same bhakti what is there nija nija karma nirata shruti riti nija nija karma nirata shruti in bhagavad gita also bhagwan talks about same thing or series Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Sve Sve Karmanya Bhirataha Samsidhim Labhate Naraha Sve Sve Karmanya Bhirata Samsidhim Lavate Naraha Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Sve Sve Karmanya Bhirata Ha Sam Siddhim Lavate Naraha Naraha some siddhim lavate. The man gains perfection. How? Sve sve karmani abhirataha. By engaging himself very diligently in his own karma, in his own duties. Uh, that is the word there. Eh? In one's own duties. Nija nija karma. Sve sve and nija nija is their synonyms. Nija nija, one's own. Nija nija karma. Nirata. And abhirataha. Same all words and all. Eh? Copy of Bhagavad Gita only. Then, only thing which is missing, which is changed, Nirata Shruti Riti, which is given according to Shruti Riti, means which is laid down by Shastras. And there in the Bhagavad Gita, what Bhagavan is saying, Sam Siddhim Lavate Naraha, that man gains perfection. So, the idea is to engage ourselves in our duty. Now, this is a big topic. Eh? Let me just back up a little bit and tell you. Everybody engaging in their own duty, their own work. Uh, now, from a very, very, very simplistic standpoint, 
used to hear in the villages in the old days. You know, very simple thing. Tell me if you have not heard. I'm sure all of you have heard. Look here. Mind your own business. Have you heard this thing? Mind your own business means what? Arribaya, you have this work now. You have this work. You concentrate on this work which you are doing. You are correct or not? Huh? Otherwise, everybody robber necking. In Trinidad, we have a real bad word for that. When there is anything, a police officer just stops spotting somebody on the side of the highway. So, no, that time, what you're supposed to be doing? Whatever work you have at that time, just you concentrate only on that rubber necking thing caused a lot of trouble. See, northbound lane, somebody, a police officer has stopped somebody. Whole southbound lane is backed up. Because everybody in the southbound lane slowed down to watch. See, this thing is applicable even at all levels. So I'm telling this is a very simplistic level. Nija nija karma. Nirata. Stay and revel in your own work. That is the idea. So it's such a simple thing. And the simple language of the village is you mind your own business. This is first thing. It's at a simple level. Now, Tulsi Daji has given very nicely there. Nirata. And then next to it, Shruti Riti. The Shruti has given certain ways to do our work. And what is the meaning of this now? Now, this also has several levels. First thing, Shruti tells that we are supposed to do our work based on Varna Ashrama Dharma. Correct? Varna Ashrama. If I belong to this Varna caste, then I do the work of this caste. If I belong to that caste, I do the work of that caste. Like that. Mm. And Ashrama. It, ashrama means whatever stage of life we are. If I am a student, I should do work of student. If I am householder, I should do work of Householder. Otherwise, we get them mixed up, isn't it? The students living like householder. Householder has gone back to school. Because what? My, I did not complete my education, you know. So he's 25 years old and he's sitting in class 8. To all the 8 graders. Middle school. Hare Krishna. Doesn't look so good, now. So, based on ashrama, whatever stage of life, and based on our varana means whatever karma, guna karma that make up my constitution, it makes me suited to do a specific type of work. You give him something else to do. Oh, Bapre. So, like for example, in our, in our, um, See, predominantly in our Indian community, living in US and Canada and all of these countries, all our parents, they're making all our children into Brahmanas. So all of them do Brahmana karma. Really? All uh, Brahmana karma. The, 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 the drift is in that direction. So you take one of our youngsters from Canada, the States, and you put them, hey, here, come, peel this vegetable. With what shall I peel it? Dear Swami, dear Swami, with what shall I peel it? With a potato peeler, what do you expect? Oh, then you give him a potato peeler. No, he doesn't know which side to hold it. Hmm? I, I, I'm not joking. I'm telling you. See, we took some of these youngsters to our Tapuvan ashram. We have an ashram in the mountains. Tapuvan ashram. There. And I told her, hey, look, there are 10 pounds of potatoes there. I want you all to go and peel these potatoes. There are knives over there. I was shocked. Some of these youngsters did not know which side of the knife is used for peeling potatoes. I'm a, so you see, he's trained in this one thing. You see, he's Varna, really. He's trained to do Brahmana karma only. You give him some any type of other karma. So I'm saying each person's aptitude, his guna karma constitution makes him suited to doing a certain type of work and what is it he should stick to, should he said he should stick to that type of work hmm? not some other thing so nija nija karma 
determined by our guna uh, the constitution distribution of gunas you know that the scriptures tell everywhere you have studied already predominantly sattva brahmana karma predominantly tamas shudra karma and then in between kshatriya and vaishya so the constitution of guna makes him suited to do certain type of that is called his nija karma his own karma you see this is the idea and each person has to seek out that for himself see one cannot just look at your face and then determine what your karma will be see, only you can see inside your heart na i am predominantly sattva rajas or tamas i am predominantly rajas with sattva in second position and kshatriya dharma if i am predominantly rajas with tamas in second position and vaishya so i engage in those type of work hmm. that is the idea eh? shruti now shruti riti is a second meaning please pay attention shruti riti means the shruti directs us how to do our karma eh? first so the direction is given as to what type of karma but it also tells how to do what type of karma means brahmana kshatriya vaishya or shudra karma right that what type of karma shruti riti but then how how means what ishwara arpana buddhi ishwara arpitam nechaya kritam chitta shodhakam mukti sadhakam you know so how there is a what and a how as well shruti riti and the shruti directs like this so we should do ishwara arpana buddhi isn't it we do that work and do gurudev is to say is not and actually speaking now out of the two you, and you just see our puja guru everywhere you will hear him saying hmm? it is not what you do that is not important it is how you do what you do so the shruti tells what and how but between the two haha the important one is how i do it in a spirit of dedication that is the how and that is the important thing if i am doing that thing selfishly well it doesn't matter if you do if one does brahmana karma kshatriya karma vaishya karma shudra karma if it is done selfishly it's all same but if it is done selflessly that karma will be freeing hmm. one gets freed from karma bandhana ha so it is how eh so that's shruti riti see all the words are so significant in the in the lines eh? hey, where did it go now when we do this kar our own karma duties as is directed by the shastras the phala the result is given now in next line see how nicely bhagwan no sir a question will come up in your mind it might come tomorrow so let me tell today are you just now bhagwan started telling about bhakti isn't it he is answering bhakti nija nija karma nirata shruti riti is karma yoga suddenly he jumped to karma yoga how is this thing so really speaking there are really speaking two yogas you know not three two of them the gyan yoga and bhakti yoga because karma yoga fits very nicely on the bhakti yoga why because just now we said it is not what you do it is how you do what you do this is gurudev's mantra how we do that means if i am doing that selfishly or selflessly that is the important thing isn't it if i am doing selflessly it means i have arpana buddhi i am doing that i am dedicating that then to who ishwara arpitam so if i am doing that work and dedicating it to ishwara that is called a ram kaj this hanuman ji ram kaj karibe ko atur i am doing ram kaj means i am doing the work of because of ram so this is hanuman that's why hanuman chalisa and this ram chalisa ram kaaj kine binu mohi ka bishram 
until I finished the work of Bhagavan Ram. And, and who is the greater Bhakta of Bhagavan Ram than Hanumanji? And that is called that time, that work which is done for Bhagwan and dedicated to Bhagwan, that thing is called not work anymore, that is called seva in Bhakti language. And seva is, I told you, the very epitome of or the, the, the uh, summit of Bhakti. That is the ripening of Bhakti, seva. So work which is done selflessly and done dedication to Bhagwan Ram, that is called a seva in the language of Bhakti Yoga. Eh? In language of uh, Jnan Yoga, that is called as Karma, the like Karma Yoga. That is only from that side it is called like that. Really, it is called Seva. So, e even though Bhagavan Sri Ram started talking about Bhakti, Karma is very much included in, but the Karma becomes Seva. Okay. Now, what, we, what is the result? He says, now he himself tells. Now, see, next line or next two lines we will see. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Ehi kara phala puni vishaya viraga Tab mama dharma upaja anuraga Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Ram Shravanadika nava bhakti dhrahi Mama lila arati ati manamai Sant Charan Pankaj Ati Prema Man Krama Bachan Bajan Dridhane Vashira Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Siyavar Ramachandra Ki Jai Ehi Kar Phala Puni Vishaya Viraga That when one does one's Karma with Shruti Riti, according to the dictates of the Shruti, means I stay in my karma, I mind my business, and I do that karma as duty first, and then I do that karma as seva after in dedication totally to Ishwara. Hmm. When I do like that, he says, Ehi kara phala puni bishaya viraga. Abhiraga means the result of doing karma like this is a person develops great detachment from all worldly th things. Vishaya. Vishaya means worldly things. Subtle or gross, doesn't matter. Huh? All worldly things. Because I may not be attached to a gross thing, gross object. I have some props here, you know. <laughs> but I don't think these props will be used in this discourse. Huh? Maybe again. But anyway, so... The gross object. Gross object means your five senses can perceive that. But human beings are also attached to subtle things. Like for example, I am attached to my image. People know me as one who comes on time. That's my image. I am always on time. I don't want my image to be broken, you know. So we have image about ourselves also. Just subtle things. and I, We are attached to that. That is hurt. If my image is hurt, I am hurt like in being. So like that. Eh? So he, the person develops vairagya from doing his duty and doing, letting it mature into seva for Bhagwan Like that. Eh? Nija nija karma nirata shurti reti. Ehi kara phala puni vishaya viraga. Taba mama dharma upaja anuraga. When he develops vairagya, this passion from all the worldly things. If one 
detaches from worldly things. What will be left? Only Bhagwan. What else? When I detach from all worldly things, Bhagwan only will be left, isn't it? And that person will develop great love for the feet of Tapa Mama Dharma Upaja Anuraga. Great love for the feet of Bhagwan. Or Mama Dharma, a word is given. Living, breathing, talking, walking, laughing, Bhagwan only. Means he is not there is nothing else for him in this world. Because he has developed detachment from everything. So for him, there is only Bhagwan. And whatever he does is only a an expression of the divine working through him. That is the idea. Hmm. When that person de dedicates his life fully to Ishwara, well, only what Ishwara? Hoi soi jo Ram Rachi Rakha. In his life, he understands this. Only that will happen, which is dedicated, uh, dictated by Ram. It's ordained by Bhagwan Sri Ram. Hmm. So, this is the result of doing one's duty as seva eventually. Eh? Only dedicated seva to the Lord. Then, Shravanadika Nava Bhakti Rirhahi Mama Leela Rati Ati Manamahi. Shravanadika Bhakti. This is referring to the nine Navada Bhakti, which is given in Bhagavatam. Very famous. Nine types of devotion. I'm sure all of you would have heard this. Shravanadi. Adi in Sanskrit means uh, etc. How you say in American language? Etc. Etc. Et hmm? <laughs> so, Shravanadi. And in Avadi becomes here, Shravanadika. Hmm. Shravana, etc. Etc. Et hmm. So, what is a Shravana, etc.? What is it? That is, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnuho, Smaranam Pada Sevanam. Smaranam Pada. Archanam Vandanam Dasyam. I get more than nine now. Archanam Vandanam Dasyam Sakyam Atmani Vedanam. So, nine. My counting not so good, but you please count. Hmm? Shravanam is nine types of devotion which is given in, in Bhagavatam. Eh? So, the person who does his duty like this and dedicates everything to Bhagwan, he's engaged in Ram Akaj like Hanumanji all the time doing the work of Bhagwan Ram. He develops also Drahi means firmness. He develops firmness, unwavering um, swabhav or nature, unwavering nature. He develops in these nine types of devotion shravanam this shravana is very important thing eh? this shravanadik is is uh, mentioning but shravanam is listening all all spirituality all things starts start from shravanam you see if that if a person cannot hear then things become very very difficult mm. shravanam as a shravanam kirtanam so it means listening, then Kirtanam, singing the praises, singing praise, or chanting, singing, chanting like Kirtanam. Kirt in Sanskrit means to praise actually, to praise, to glorify, like that. Hmm. Smaranam, remembering Bhagwan. Smaranam, Pada Sevanam, doing uh, Seva, just now we were talking about the Pada Sevanam, doing se Pada means feet. Archanam, worship. Vandanam, doing frustrations. Dasyam, serving, becoming a servant. Sakyam, becoming Arjuna. Bhagwan in fourth chapter, it's such a nice thing. He tells Arjuna, you know why, my dear Arjuna? See, I gave this knowledge to Vivaswan. You see that passage there in fourth chapter beginning. I gave this knowledge to Vivaswan. Vivaswan gave to Manu Ityadi and he came down like this and then got lost. And today I'm giving to you. You know why? Because you're my friend. What only one rational Bhagwan is giving for giving Arjuna this knowledge. Hmm. You're my friend. Sakhami, Timi, you're my friend. And therefore, I'm imparting to you, my friend. So, so this is Sakyam and Atmani Vedanam means total 
surrender to Bhagwan. Total merging, merging with Bhagwan like this. All these are different expressions of bhakti in Bhagavatam. The person develops dhrata, means firmness in these types of devotion. And you see, let me tell you one more thing before we continue. Do you know? We don't have to be um, jack of all trades and master of none. Have you heard this phrase? You become jack of all trades and master of none. In one type of devotion, if we take, at one time I was staying in Vrindavan for a few months. Huh? So, one great Swamiji is there, Swami Khandananji Maharaj. So I had gone to his, his ashram and I was staying there for some time. In that ashram, there's a temple. And in that temple, one sadhu used to come there and every day he had a long stick like this. Every single day, his stick was not, not about this length only, piece of stick. This is a rope and not a stick. But his stick was this long. And he used to come there and sit in that temple from four to six in the evening time. Four to six, because six o'clock, Arati will start and all that. But anyways, he used to come there from four to six. And two hours by himself, he will just go on singing bhajan of Bhagwan Krishna. And with his stick in front of him, he used to knock for tal, like this, just to get the rhythm. No musical instrument, no tabla, no harmonium, no nothing. He used to knock for tal only to get that rhythm like that and he went on singing two hours alone he had become so famous so many people used to just come to nobody used to go to, to, to listen to Swamiji to that time when Swamiji also stopped everything whoever Swami they're talking and they used to stop because they know that he'll come there and sit and he'll sing Shri Ram Jai Ram and he's that bhajan of Bhagwan. Krishna, whatever bhajan. Two hours non-stop, every single day. And nishtha, in one type of, of this bhakti, nine types of bhaktis, in one type, nishtha is enough. Hmm. Kirtanam. You see, singing the glory of Bhagwan. So, shravana navad. Bhakti Dhrirahi, then Mama Leela Rati, Ati Manamahi. The Mama Leela word is very, very profound. Reveling in the Leela of Bhagwan. So all of these phrases are so wonderful, you know. Look here. If it is Bhagwan himself, with his own intrinsic internal power, his innate power, he himself has manifested as this un universe of Nama Rupa. In our Sanatana Dharma, we don't discount this Nama Rupa prapancha, you know. We speak about the Jiva getting taken over by this prapancha, Maya prapancha made of names and forms, taking it to be real and in that taking it to be real, there is forgetfulness of the substratum which gives it existence. This is the problem only. It's not that we there is anything wrong or anything not divine about this prapancha. No, no, it is nothing like that. If it is the manifestation of Bhagwan himself, how it will not be divine? It is when we take that, that alone to be the real thing, and in doing that, there is forgetfulness of this adhisthana, or the substratum, the adhar of the entire prapancha. It is that forgetfulness of the adhar that is the problem for the jiva. So from that vein only, we go on saying things about sansar and about, you know, attachment to this world and all of that sort of thing. But for the person who is, or who understands 
the Aadhaar or the support, the Adhishthana of the world, I, for that person, he sees this divine Leela of Bhagwan. It's a divine Leela. And this divine Leela, he revels in it. So let's call it Rat, Mama Leela Rati Ati Manamahi. He revels it. See, uh, you have heard of this thing already. Bhajago Vindam Bhajago Vindam Go Vindam Bhajamura Mate Yogar Tova Bhogar Tova Sangar Tova Sangavihi Yasya Brahmani Ramate Chittam Nandati 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 Eva Bhajago Govindam Bhajamura Mate Bhajamura Mate For the person who understands the substratum of the universe, yogaratova, bhogaratova, whether he is engaged in yoga or bhoga, sangaratova, sangavihina, whether he is in the company of people, sangha, association, sangavihina, then nobody, all alone. Yasya Brahmani Ramate Chittam, who has understood that substratum and reveling in that substratum, but Nandati, 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 he revels, revels, revels only. So he says, Mama Leela, Rati, Ati Manama, uh, Rati means revel. Nandati, he revels in the Leela of, see, everywhere, wherever he looks, it is my Ram only. Hmm. Rama here, Rama there, Rama everywhere. And everything is Rama's Leela. He laughs. Once, once Adhu, he was sitting one day like this. On the tree. Then some uh, fellow had just rubbed some place. And he had a bag of um, loot. Loot, huh? He had a bag of loot. He was coming with that. And then the police came after that man. So he realized that the police is right there on his heels. And they'll catch up with him. So what? This sadhu is sitting here. This man came and he deposited that bag of loot with that sadhu. He dropped it on his lap. And he ran away. Thinking, he is... Bhole bhale sadhu, I'll come back later and I'll take it from him or whatever. Meanwhile, police came. They saw this bag of loot with the sadhu. So they said, huh? Oh, oh, you fellow, you robbed there, now you're, you're pretending to be sadhu. They caught him and gave him to the tupper like that and you know, took him and they took him to that prison and all. With loot and everything. Pretending to be sadhu. So, next morning, they produced him before the judge. So, the judge said, so now what do you have to say for yourself? You were caught red-handed with this bag of loot. He said, Your Honor, by the grace of Bhagwan Sri Ram, I was sitting under that tree. By the grace of Bhagwan Sri Ram, one fellow deposited a bag of loot with me by the grace of bhagwan sri ram the police officer came and they grabbed me they by the grace of bhagwan sri ram they gave me some tupper also by the grace of bhagwan sri ram they took me in that jail by the grace of bhagwan sri ram they brought me here in front of you now what to say what else i'll say so that judge a very wise judge he Realize, Are, this is really simple bhole bhale sadhuji. He really could not have stolen this thing, you know. 
he believed that story also that somebody deposited that bag with him and all so that sadhu said okay take hey leave that bag here you go go home that sadhu said and also by the grace of bhagwan shri ram now you let me go so whether they beat me lock me up whether they free me it all the grace of bhagwan ram mm. every part of the sansar he sees as the divine leela of bhagwan ram that is the idea eh? nothing else which is going on so mama leela ati mati mana rati ati mana mahi so revel in his mind is leela of bhagwan my ram is working every actually is a wonderful exercise i don't know why people do other exercise if you want to really discover this ram you have to come to trinidad then here you'll discover ram very nicely see right here in the ashram just i got up just few days ago in trinidad we have something called bachak you don't know what is a bachak because in america you have no bachak a bachak is a big ant like this huge fellow eh ant not an uncle and takara kind of ant eh? ant means it, that walk crawls on the ground big fellow eh? and in front of his head he has two sharp clippers like this and he they come into the ashram or they come wherever and overnight they will collect all the nice soft tender leaves of any plant and they'll take it to their nest they have some process and all you see in these all documentaries and anyway they go there and ferment it to and the fermenting bacteria they eat that only they don't need leaves but they collect leaves i tell you if you see the intelligence of these creatures and so many of these tropical creatures and things happening in the tropics you see the intelligent man you will really see i tell you bhagwan's leela played out so nicely in all things intelligence abounds in the universe you know because it is the lord's leela which is going on so this leela is divine leela of the lord and for one to really recognize that one has to slow down see uh, in, in this today's modern world we don't slow down it's a fast paced rat race you have to slow down and take a deep breath and look at the plants and the flowers and look at the universe and look at the sky and the stars and look at things around it just a simple practice only one will start developing an appreciation for bhagwan leela which is there in so many varied ways in such a multifarious ways this leela expresses itself huh? so to revel in the leela of bhagwan huh? this is also the now next one sant charan and this is perhaps tulsi dashi's most favorite and in bhakti marg in bhakti marg sant purush has a special or have a special place see see this see this uh how sant purush is given a special place in this bhakti marg listen to all the words huh? बार बार बर मागौ हरषि देहु श्री रंगो राम हरषि देहु श्री रंग पद सरोज अन पायनी भगति सदा सत संग सिया बर राम चंद्र की जय शरणम पवन सुत हनुमान की जय उमापति महादेव की जय बोलो भाई सब संतन की जय सियावर राम चंद्र की जय शरण दिस इज कॉल दोहा दिस इज सेकंड मोस्ट पॉपुलर वर्स in this ramayana do ha from uttarakhand but you know this tradition has 
we brought here to, to the Caribbean since 1845, this tradition. And even today, 170 something odd years after this thing is still going on. And how many countless generations before it is going on? We say, Siyavara Ramachandra ki jai. Pavana Sutta Hanuman ki jai. Mapati Mahadev ki jai. And last we leave. Sabha Santan ki jai. Santa. You see, we never fail to do this thing. So how this tradition has given that place to sun? Look where the saints are placed. Pavanasutta Hanuman ki, Siyabara Ramachandra ki, Pavanasutta Hanuman ki, Vapati Mahadev ki, and then, and we saw like, Bhakti is left for last. The best is always left for last. So, Sant Charan, Pankaja, Ati Prema. Sant means saint. And you see, Sant and Saint in English. See where you can see where the word came from? Santa. Saint. Saint. Not Santa. Eh? <laughs> so, Sant and then Charan, Seva. And then, next word, Pankaj, is Lotus. Lotus feet of the saints. Ati Prema. Great love for the lotus feet of the saint. Now see how this uh, word which is given that Tulsi Daji makes his choice of words like this. He never chooses one word just arbitrarily like that. And we do that. But he never do, does this. Every word, every single word is thought out and put there. So he, Santa Charana Pankaj, the lotus, Pankaj means lot, uh, lotus. Pankaja. Panka means, you know, it is mud. Mud and that dirty, and that jar which is born there. So that which is born in that mud, lurky, in dirty water, that is called as lotus. And, and this word most appropriately describes a Santa. How a saint is he who lives in this Maya Prapancha, who lives in this samsara, who lives in all this distracting universe with all of the, you see, we were describing the previous day, good and evil, but like that lotus, not one iota of that dirt of that water ever gets into that lotus, correct? It is sweet to the smell and beautiful to the eyes and attractive to the bees and ad adored by everybody. The saint never allows any of the impurities of this sansar to get into his heart. And that's why, see, after reveling in the Leela of Bhagwan only, the, the type of bhakti is given immediately after that. Because describing a saint. Sant Charana Pankaja Ati Prema. Great love for this saint. Saint who never allows any impurity to get into his heart, to corrupt his heart, corrupt his mind. He, he sees only all beauty everywhere. He lives for the, for the benefit of others. See, one other thing. And this is, actually, if you are a sociologist, it might be very, very wise for you to study this Ram Charitra Manas because Santa Tulsi Das Ji, he's also kind of Santa. Our school building is going up here, just on the outside of where I'm talking, a few um, hundred feet from here. A school building is going on 50,000 square feet of space. And that campus of, of the school is called Santa Tulsi Das Ji campus, right here. Where Santa word is used, Santa Tulsi Das Ji. Huh? So he chooses all these words most appropriately. Whatever he is doing, he chooses like that only. Not that um, he just arbitrarily chooses words. And if 
I was saying, if you are studying sociology, you should study how he has chosen certain words for certain things. Tulsi Dashi lived, and we are still living in a in a world where even though we say that the caste system has um, brought so much of dreaded things to our society, to the society, and continues to be so, and all uh, what we call um, uh, Western media and all, they all make a poke fun at it, like that. They go on telling, you know, uh, those who are untouchables, and you hear these words all the time coming out, right? Because we have brought this upon ourselves as a people, as a civilization. And just now, to see actually in the beginning uh, mentioned there, the love for the feet of the Brahmanas. So the caste is quickly given in the beginning of Bhakti. But then here, in the middle of his discourse now, he's telling, Santa Charana Pankaja Ati Prema. And this word Sant is totally stripped off, devoid of, bereft of any linkages or any uh, ties to caste. So you start with a word that is strongly tied to caste, but right in the middle of his discourse, now the Santa word, Saint, is a word which is totally devoid of any linkages to caste. It means one whose heart is absolutely pure and uncorrupted by anything in sansar. This is the idea. Eh? And he says here, yeah, to have ati prema, great love for the, see there, ati priti. Ati prema. I told you the synonyms. Eh? Great love for the feet of saints. And mana, krama, bachana, bhajana, dridha, nema. And in body, mana, krama, bachan. This is in the tradition, all traditions of India, the three are spoken about. Mind, body, and speech. Mana, karma, bachan. Bhajana, dridha, nema. Firm uh, adoration and worship in body, speech, and mind to Bhagwan and to saint, santa. It could be read both ways. So with body, speech, and mind to be firmly adoring, worshipping, praising the Lord. See, bhajan word is used. And bhajan word also has big application. Eh? Bhajagovinnam, bhajagovinnam. Bhaja word means to worship. So with body, speech, and mind, to worship firmly that saint or that lord. And now time is over. We will see the rest tomorrow. Not many are there. I'll finish all the rest there in the first five minutes tomorrow, and then we'll do question and answer. <laughs> okay. So Bhagavan describes, see, all these are practices in bhakti, isn't it? Practice. It says, Siddha kasya lakshanani, sadha kasya sadhanani. We have to develop all of these great qualities of the great devotees and bhaktas and all that. Huh? All right. So now we'll have the announcements. Suriji will come and then we'll have closing prayer. Okay. Hari Om. Thank you, Swamiji. We are looking forward for the finishing tomorrow. As Swamiji has uh, mentioned yesterday about Guru Dakshina, and we are requesting uh, for the Guru Dakshina, if you feel like contributing uh, to Guru Dakshina, for those who are in US and Canada, they can follow our, they can go to our homepage and follow the donate button. Uh, it's in two places on our homepage. You can use credit cards to do whatever, to give whatever uh, you think is fit for you to give in. Or if you prefer to mail a check, I'm going to uh, put the uh, 
<clears throat> address, but this is the address you write the check, checks payable to Chinmaya Mission Peoria and Chinmaya Mission uh, 8001 North University Peoria. And I, I don't expect you to remember, I'll put it on uh, the chat. Uh, look for it. For those in Trinidad and Tobago residents, please follow, go to their website and they have specific instructions and follow or call 6793652 for you to be able to uh, do the Guru Dakshina. It's a token of gratitude for the wonderful lecture and discourse that we have had so far. And uh, please do take time to uh, do that. Also, we have about 10 to 12 questions this morning when I saw. If you are having any questions, I think some of the doubts yesterday's are clear today. If you still have those questions, please do log them in. Again, when you go to our website, you will see a, a link for documenting your questions. Locally, we have Bhagavad Gita Jayanti and Tapuvan Jayanti planned for 25th of December uh, from 3 p.m. onwards. Uh, just to those who are not in theory, of what, what we do is each uh, volunteer teacher would be chanting or, uh, one chapter or split the chapters, depending on the size of the chapter. All 18 chapters will be read. And it starts at 3 p.m. And if you want to sign up, uh, please do contact YJNTG. Also, we have uh, shown this before. Uh, or it's coming up. Please take time. Again, it's local here to Peoria. Uh, please do register your children uh, with for the Gita competition. You can work with your school teacher, uh, class teacher, or you can contact YGNTG for this as well. Yesterday we shared this. I'm just bringing it again. Tomorrow there is this virtual fundraising event uh, for Chen Chinmay Mission, Kansas City, and then. Swamiji will be conducting an e-camp uh, on Vishnu Sahasranamam from 21st to 27th uh, with all kinds of, uh, the, the website has all details on what is going to be covered. Please do take time and avail of the opportunity to chant with Swamiji on Vishnu Sahasranamam. So that brings an end to all the announcements I have. Uh, Swamiji, uh, it's back to you. Thank you, Suriji. Suriji has so much of patience, a great stalwart of Chinmay Mission Peoria. Thank you very much for having me once more tonight. And we shall see tomorrow. Let us all join in closing prayer. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Gurupyo Namaha Hari Om